we got here with Dr. Dave. What have we got here? We're making a woodland! In this area, we call them box gum grassy woodlands. But a lot of them are being cleared for houses and roads and farms, haven't they? But we've got some good patches left and we have still got a few of these animals left. Now these big trees here, they're probably three or four hundred years old and they are very, very productive trees. They have lots and lots of leaves. Kieran's got lots of holes because he's an old red gum and he's got lots of hollows. So he's got a, it's a feather tail glider and they like to hang out in hollows. And these are all flower buds so they produce lots of flowers and nectar every year. And they have lots of flaky bark on them, okay? Now what sorts of things live under bark? Yes, Eddie? Bugs and insects. Bugs and insects, and what lizards. else have you found? Lizards, very good. Spiders. Spiders, brilliant. So there's lots and lots of really good habitat. Did you know in this area, we had at least about 50 different types of native grass growing? And grasses are wonderful. They, have these, they grow in these big tussocky shapes. They have lots of leaves that animals like to eat. And they have seed heads. Now this whole thing is about diversity. So lots of different plants. So these big gum trees are dropping seed. And if one falls down and there's a gap, sometimes you get a lot of young trees coming up. And we don't just get small gum trees. Sometimes there's other small native plants like this hickory wattle. And they, all these different plants, what's really good about them is they're all producing different sorts of flowers, different sorts of fruits. For instance, this shea has got little cones on it. The hickory wattle would have pods on it. Different sorts of food, different places for animals to be. Animals that don't like being up high in the trees, they might prefer to be down here. Okay, so she's got some flax lily there, which is a great plant, flowers, has little berry fruits on it. So we're getting a bit of diversity happening here, aren't we? She's got a bit of Mallee bush pea, which isn't flowering at the moment, but it has little yellow flowers on it. So there's lots of little low growing plants that you probably don't even realise they're there. This animal is a bandicoot. So it's had a feast of insects over here, but then it wants to hide, it wants to shelter. And the sort of place that it likes to shelter is on the ground, digs out a bit of a hole, shelters under leaf litter, under nice dense plants. Now imagine if those plants weren't there, how hard it would be for that little animal to hide and shelter. These big trees over here, because they've got lots of leaves and lots of bark, they're producing a lot of leaf litter. Now, if I was a little skink over near Jack, where would I rather be? Would I rather be on the plain ground or would I rather be in the leaf litter? Leaf litter. Absolutely, because it's helping me to, what's the word? Hide. Hide, yep. And it's camouflaging me. It's a grey crown babbler. They love foraging in the leaf litter because they like to eat insects. Insects, absolutely. And he can go foraging for some insects. What have you got there? Ooh. Hollow log. Hollow log. Wow, now we're talking. And this is some sticks. Yep. Fallen Down. branches. Fallen yep. And that's a nice shelter for a bird. Mm, it is, actually. And when you've got rotting logs, what do you end up with? Like termites. termites, absolutely. But these guys like to eat them. So I'm going to put the old echidna down here. You can place him somewhere where he can have a munch, the bush stone curlew. This animal relies on blending it with its surroundings so that other predatory animals can't find it. And one of the things it blends in really, really well with is fallen branches and logs on the ground. So rocks are really important in the landscape. They're great basking places for reptiles and they have nice cracks and crevices in them so they can hide and places for them to also look for the sorts of things that they like to eat. Now I've been watching dead trees over the years and what I often see is something like a, a kookaburra in them and they use them as a song post. I guess they're marking out their territory by using it as a song post. So you get him up here going cook, 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 cook telling all his mates, this is the edge of the territory, this is where I am. And the other sort of thing that happens with dead trees is they form hollows much quicker than living trees. And lots of those hollows will be taken up by a lot of parrots. Those sorts of birds like to nest in hollows. 
And the other sort of thing that happens, it gets cracks and crevices in it. And you can sometimes end up with 50 or 100 or more bats. little bats. bats. I've got a peg to hang my bat on. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a beauty. They do so much. They're providing so much. And yet sometimes people just think, oh, it's firewood. But it's not. It's really, really important habitat. It's part of this whole picture that we've got here. What I've got is lots of layers of plants, big ones, middle-sized ones, low-growing ones. I've got a huge diversity of different sorts of plants. And the more different kinds of things, the more different animals can live there. And they all depend on one another somewhere along the line. What have we got here with Dr Dave?